Now, first of all, we will talk about the various models of atoms and the very basic one is the Thomson model of atom. So, we will start with the very basic one, the Thomson model of atom. Now, Thomson model, he actually gave a hypothesis and he actually knew that an atom has negatively charged and positively charged particles within it. His model was actually a plum pudding model. You must have seen plum cake and in it you must be seeing that several chocolate particles, choco chip particles are actually spread all over in the plum cake or you can see that small small cherries are actually spread in the cake. So what he said, he said in the plum pudding model there are several, the entire atom has charges and the positively charged is actually distributed within this model. So, he gave the model of atom as the entire atom is comprised of positively charged particles and to make the atom neutral, negatively charged are actually spread all over within the volume of the atom. This model is known as the Thomson model of atom and actually this model is a very layman's model. This was not based upon experiments, he actually knew that an atom may be having a positively charged and a negatively charged particle. To actually neutralize the atom, he used the plum pudding model. He said that there are positively charged particles and to neutralize it and to neutralize the atom, he said that the entire volume is having the negative charge within it. But the problem with this model is, why this problem, why this model actually failed? There are certain observations which were not explained by this Thomson model. So let's talk about the failure of Thomson model. This model actually is it's not a true model of an atom and it failed to show the actual atomic structure of any element. What atoms are comprised of it was not able to actually show it, not able to prove certain observations. So first of all it was unable to unable to explain hydrogen spectral lines or spectral lines of hydrogen atom. Later on in this chapter, we will see that in a hydrogen atom case, what are those spectral lines that I am talking about in this line, unable to explain expect spectral lines of hydrogen atom or hydrogen like atom, it was unable to explain. So different model was required to explain the spectral lines of the hydrogen atom. So that will be seeing the later class what are actually spectral lines of the hydrogen atom. It failed to actually explain so that why Thomson model was not actually so much tactful, it was not so much valid to explain such phenomena that we had observed. Second thing, let's try to talk upon the second thing that Thomson model actually failed. Now one observation in the alpha particle scattering experiment the alpha particle got scattered and it was unable to explain the alpha particle scattering. So it was unable to explain the alpha particle scattering in the alpha particle experiment, unable to explain the alpha particle scattering in the alpha part in the alpha particle experiment, unable to explain the alpha particle experiment, that is it, alpha particle scattering experiment. Now if these two phenomena where it was not explained by the Thomson model, he took a very layman's model that he took the atom as a normal spherical structure and he said that the positive charge are actually embedded in this, like seeds we have in pumpkin, seeds we have, seeds are there, that seeds he took as positive charge. A negative charge is spread all over the volume of the pumpkin. And the same thing you take the watermelon, watermelon seeds will be there in the watermelon. So seeds you can take as the positive charge and entire the red portion of the watermelon you can take, treat them as the negative charge. And this positive and negative charge are distributed in such a way that the net electronic charge on the atom is neutral. That is what the, how it is distributed, but the problem comes that certain observations that was not explained by the Thomson model. 
if some model of the atom is unable to explain some basic basic phenomena some basic basic observations so we cannot accept it it's not a valid experiment it's not a valid model and this model failed to explain the spectral lines we will see that in hydrogen like atom whenever the electron moves from one state to other we will see that spectral lines actually come out of the hydrogen atom these observed spectral lines cannot be explained by thomson model first thing second thing alpha particle scattering experiment i will be discussing that alpha particle scattering experiment just now that was also unable to explain by thomson model and hence we cannot take that this is a valid model hence it was discarded so hence we are not taking it's a valid model it was discarded and it is not used anywhere to explain the structure of atom so simply he it was a hypothesis he knew that atoms are having positive charge and negative charge and he just gave that this might be the model of the atom and since we do not have such equipments to find out the model of the atom in those days so we had just we will start with a hypothesis and then we are trying to prove our hypothesis to be true but in this case thomson model was not to be proved and hence it was taken to be invalid and it was discarded let's talk about the next model rutherford atomic model rutherford atomic model now in this case how rutherford reached onto a model i will just tell you about the model and i will tell you what gave him which experiment the observation of which experiment gave him to the results that he came on to a conclusion that an atom might be constituted in this way he actually performed an alpha particle scattering experiment based upon the observation of the experiment he gave us the model of the atom and he said that the atom is actually having a very small positive nucleus around this positive nucleus the electrons are regularly revolving in particular orbits and these revolving electrons would be having some energy in which they are revolving and the size of the atom is very large compared to the size of the nucleus and on what basis made him to conclude this let's try to understand the experiment performed by him that is the alpha particle scattering experiment let's talk about first we'll start with alpha particle scattering experiment when i say about alpha particle scattering experiment i believe that you all must be knowing about what is an alpha particle an alpha particle is a doubly charged helium nuclei so how you can take alpha particle is a doubly charged helium nuclei so i am just mentioning here about alpha particle you can take it as 4 he2 it's a doubly charged helium nuclei that means there is no electron we are totally talking about the nucleus of the helium atom doubly charged helium nuclei that is the alpha particle it's a one mark question the ground state energy of hydrogen atom is minus 13.6 electron volt that is what we know also what are the kinetic and potential energies of electron in this state easy one mark question and i have also discussed how kinetic energy and potential are related with the total energy and i have told you what things you need to take care of first of all the total energy is given as ground state minus 13.6 electron volt i told you that kinetic energy will be just of the same magnitude but positive in nature 13.6 electron volt and potential energy will be twice of the magnitude and with the same sign of total energy that is minus 27.2 electron volt simple these all things we have discussed in the normal regular classes that is what we have discussed so what do you do take note till here let me start at the other end take note till here so i believe that the first question you have found it easy it's a one mark question that is kind of question you can score marks in your board examination having knowledge of simple concepts let's go with the next question again it's a one mark question the radius of innermost electron orbit of a hydrogen atom is 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter what is the radius of orbit in the second excited state second excited state that is we are talking about 
n equals to 3 in which the electron has reached. So if, I'm, if I talk about n equals to 1, n equals to 2, n equals to 3, 3 levels. This is the first excited state and this is the second st excited state. That is what we know. The radius here it's given, let's say it's r naught. We all know that how radius varies. How radius varies and radius varies as r equals to n square r naught, where n is the, in the number of nth orbit in which the electron lies. So second excited states, you have to place n equals to 3. That is what you have to do. Place it here, you'll get 3 square into r naught. So that comes out to be 9. I believe that you can clearly see up till this end and put up the value of r naught as 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter. R naught, that is the radius in the ground state, 5.3 into 10 to the minus 11 meter. That is what has been provided. Substitute the value simple calculation. If you do it, you'll find that it comes out to be 9327 and 95457. So it will come out to be 4.77. Yeah, or 47.7, 4.77 into 10 to the minus 10 meter you can do. That is what you can check. You will find that this will be the result. Now, after this, let us go ahead to the next part. Hope that you are taking each of the information that I am displaying here and you are understanding how to solve this. It's basic revision of the concepts that we have already done. Question number three, it's a two mark question. The ground state energy of hydrogen atom is minus 13.6 electron volt. If an electron makes a transition from an energy level of minus 1.5 electron volt to minus 3.4 electron volt, then calculate the wavelength of the spectral line em emitted and name the series of hydrogen spectrum to which it belongs. The electron is making transition from 1.5 electron volt, minus 1.5 electron volt to minus 3.4 electron volt. You just check here. This is the ground state, n equals to 1. And again, n equals to 2, then we have n equals to 3. If I mention the energy, minus 13.6 electron volt, then after this, if I have to calculate the value of the energy, that will come out to be, you see here, this will be minus 3.4 electron volt, and this will be minus 1.51 electron volt. So electron makes a transition from this to this, to 3 to 2. So you can, you have to evaluate, calculate the wavelength, wavelength of the spectral line. We all know that how to evaluate the wavelength. Delta E is equal to Hc by lambda. That is what you have to do. Delta equals to Hc by lambda. You have to place all the values. So lambda will come out to be Hc by delta E. That is what you have to do. Place all the values. You will get the value of lambda. That is what you can do. So what you do, take note till here. And let me give you the numerical values of all this, which will be helpful. Take note till here. Now see, in this question, we are required for the value of Hc. Hc is given as 1240 electron volt nanometer. And delta E, delta if you calculate the difference in the energy from here to here, that will come out to be 1.89 electron volt. You can just check it, you'll get 1.89 electron volts. Substitute it here, 1.89 electron volt. And from here, you can get the value of lambda. That is what you can do. And you'll find that the value of lambda will come out to be nearly 656 nanometer. So take note of this answer. Let me start at the under it. Take note of this answer. Okay, I believe that you would have taken note of this and you have learned to how to solve this. Simple, simple basic data you need to remember for such kind of questions. Now let's switch to the next one. Question number four, it's again two mark question. An electron jumps from fourth to first orbit. In an atom, how many maximum number of spectral lines can be emitted by the atom? To which series these lines correspond? From fourth to first orbit. So let me mark out n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, we have to make pairs. How many pairs can be found? 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, then 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 1, then 2, 2, 1. You can see that 6 pairs, you can automatically make it out. 
or suppose it's given that any higher nth orbit you need to find it out so number of pairs that can be formed number of pairs that can be formed from any higher nth orbit that will be given as n n minus 1 by 2 for this case 4 4 minus 1 3 by 2 so it will come out to be 6 and that is what we can also make it out from this diagram also.